Now, most of us have, you know, we're never going to be professional drivers or athletes. And certainly as we're aging, those, the need for really complex motor skills and cognitive skills may go down. But what is the equivalent that you think about for a person as they reach middle life and they're thinking about transitioning, you know, or what lies ahead of them as they, as they transition into, into older age? In other words, what is that apex set of skills that they need to be able to have to give them the the highest amount of physiologic headroom possible to avoid or minimize this age related decline and and more importantly potentially even avoid the pathologic stuff that we haven't talked about yet but we'll come to I, I think a lot of it again is probably quite individual right if you want to be able to perform a specific task, right? You want to be able to drive cars for as long as you're able, right? Mm -hmm. The next four or five decades. So then you would you would want to push your skills as far as you can in that arena while, while you're able. And then you have, like you said, maybe we'll talk about more about this idea of headroom. You you cannot, at least not yet, we cannot completely stop the aging process but you may be able to slow the decline and or if you increase your the the level of capacity it will take longer to get to a point where you know function is lost such that you can no longer engage in that activity um, the you know when you're thinking about the brain you know there's a whole bunch of things related to language skills um, obviously um, memory is important um, but how you interact with your environment and, and I think social interaction is, is critically important and something that is, is probably um, under-discussed in relation to long-term cognitive function. That's, that's, that's a critical aspect as well, particularly as people spend less time um, with others um, uh, sort of because of uh, societal uh, effects. But when you think broadly about how cognitive function declines with age, it seems to mirror very closely the amount of demand that we put on our brains. And again, across you know, how society is constructed. Because cognitive function essentially increases from birth to some peak in late teens or in your early 20s, which is the period of formal education. It is your job to learn, right? It's your job to develop skills. That's when most sports are learned. Um, that's when languages are learned. That's when skills are learned. And then after that, you essentially spent a, bun a bunch of time doing the same thing over and over. Or you become hyper-specialized in one specific skill, and that's rewarded in, in a number of jobs, right? And so say you're a surgeon, you want a lot of those processes to be automatic. You don't want to have to think about all of them continuously, right? So it's beneficial. It makes you better at your job. Um, but there's much less uh, room for that period of, of skill building or putting in you know, effort into developing or providing those kinds of stimuli that then drive plastic reorganization in the brain and may increase headroom. So I think some of that natural decline with aging is a function of how we use our brains in general uh, in society. And then there's a, a, a drop off when we retire and we can we can see that in, in various different types of data sets where those who retire earlier seem to experience cognitive decline sooner. And that's probably because the, the cognitive demand that we do get in our daily lives, the majority of that comes comes from work. So the you know, an important answer I think is, you know, if you're trying to maintain a basic set of cognitive functions, is to actively work on ways to increase headroom, increase absolute capacity throughout the lifespan. Because, I mean, at some point, capacity will decrease, but you want to push that out as far as you can. You know, hopefully you'll die of something else before, you know, you lose, you know, the majority of your cognitive capacities. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I think everybody's aware of the anecdote, right? Where, boy, you know, Sally was just sharp as attack and then she retired and all of a sudden it all went to hell in a handbasket but mm -hmm. you know you hear this so many times that you realize there must be something to this it it can't just be you know an observational phenomenon that's best explained by something else there may be other contributors to it mm -hmm. maybe people who are retiring younger 
also have more health challenges. Maybe they're of lower socioeconomic status. I mean, you could come up with a lot of confounders that could explain this. Yeah. Yeah. But but I suspect that there is also a signal there. There's some fire in the in the uh, uh, the presence of that smoke that says, you know, if you retire and in its place add nothing cognitively, um, hmm. you know, w you could expect to see a decline. I also can't help but wonder how much of this has to do with sense of purpose, which again I think maybe falls outside of kind of you know, we're now getting, we're getting really warm and fuzzy outside of the scientific discussion, but, <laughs> but you know, it's a, it, the question I always have is look, retirement should be thought of maybe as a financial decision. Maybe retiring means I no longer need to work for money, but I'm going to work on something else. And mm. if that something else is not as cognitively demanding, right? Let's say you go from being an accountant where, you know, it's pretty cognitively demanding. You're have to be, you know, you're in a spreadsheet all day. Um, and you say, well, look, I'm 65, I'm done with that. And I don't need to work anymore. But now I'm going to go and do something in the, you, you know, I'm going to do something philanthropic where I'm going to work for, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in homelessness as an example. I'm going to go and do X, Y, and Z. Well, you, you probably have more sense of purpose. You might derive more satisfaction from that, uh, even though it's not as cognitively challenging. Do we have any sense of how that factors into it? Or is that just so far outside of our ability to, to kind of understand risk? The majority of, of studies that have looked at this have, I guess they fall into two camps, which partially answer your question, but don't necessarily answer it fully. Um, the, the first is looking at you know, the removal of that stimulus through through retirement. It's been done in, in several population-based studies. They usually account for medical conditions that you know might cause you to retire early, because that's an important that's an important confounder. Um, and when you look at other studies, there are, you know, there's evidence to suggest that late in life cognitive activity, so whether you regularly play chess or you dance or you do something else that, that that's cognitive stimulating, that's protective against um, incident dementia or cognitive decline. Um, so the two parts of that would say that removal of work as a major cognitive stimulus in increases risk, but that adding some other kind of cognitive stimulus mitigates that risk. Um, and there are several studies where you do some kind of cognitive training. Maybe it's a computer-based brain training in older adults in their you know, 70s. You can see significant improvements in cognitive function. Um, and if you think about all the things that are most protective in terms of, of preventing cognitive decline, there was a, a big meta-analysis done by uh, uh, Jintai Yu, who's a uh, professor in Shanghai, looking at all the different potentially modifiable factors for cognitive decline. The two most important protective ones were early in life education, which I think of as increasing headroom. So the more you learn and skills you develop early in life and the longer you do that for, the greater headroom you have. And then late in life cognitive activity, which then provides that protective factor. So I think there's enough evidence, you know, as much as we can right now, and most of this is observational, although there are some interventional trials in older adults, you can say that if you're no longer working, if you replace it with cognitively stimulating activities, you're probably mitigating, you know, all of that risk, or at least most of it.